Today, we invite our colleague, Hazen, a uh, Korean native, um, having an overseas dialogue with our uh, alumni, very uh, you know, outstanding alumni, Silas Fong. He's a teaching in um, Korean as well. Okay, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Momo. Thank you. Um, so, welcome everybody to this talk series. Um, I think most of you should know that I am Hisan <laughs> and I teach currently uh, graphic design here at ABA. Then we have an alumna here next to us, Silas Paul. Um, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Hello, uh, I am Silas Paul. Uh, I graduated in 2008 in the Academy of Visual Arts. Um, and then after that, I have my master in the Chinese University. And then I went to Germany uh, for further studies from 2013 to 2015. And then uh, around 2017, I got an invitation and then I went to uh, Korea, uh, the Jungang University, and I started to teach in the Department of Photography. So as an artist, I also uh, do various different work, like video installation. Uh, yeah, so I am very happy to come back to also not physically, but come back to the ABA and give a uh, share my experience. And also, uh, hopefully, I can help you if you are interested to study in Korea. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, All right. Um, so, we decided to take this on as like a very casual conversation between the two, um, mainly because. Well, I mean, Silas is working in Korea at the moment, and I am native to Korea country. Well, however, we still do not share much experience about the graduate school in Korea, because I wasn't uh, a graduate student in Korea, and Silas wasn't a graduate student in Korea either. But we can definitely share our experiences on, on how, how Korea is like, how are the universities there like, um, and you know, other ideas as such. And also for the audience, I would like to invite you to, let's say if you have any questions along the way, please don't be afraid to make comments, or I mean, if, you're, if you don't want to interrupt the talk, maybe you can also leave in the chat a different kind of questions you might have. So we will just welcome any kind of um, dialogue in between, because this is not a lecture, this is not, a, um, a formal kind of talk to kind of discuss about how to study in Korea. So yes, please feel free to leave any questions in the chat, like how Lillian just have made um, on the side of the screen. Okay, so um, why don't we just first discuss about uh, what kind of universities there are in Korea? Like what kind of universities you should look for um, if you do want to study in Korea. We actually compiled a list of, uh, in, a, in a Word document, a list of universities that you might be of interest. Um, do you have the link with you now? Yeah, I think I can just share to the chat room and then everyone can open it now and then just look at it and then just talk. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So he's um, compiled a list of um, Korean university. Uh, it is a selected list. Mm -hmm. And then uh, she very kindly um, provide all, also information about like uh, what is this university specified uh, and like the tuition fee, uh, what is a good side or bad side, the website, it's very practical information. Yes, so let me just give you a brief overview of what kind of universities are there and which one you should be looking for 
if you are majoring, if you want to major in specific kind of medium. So um, on the top of the list, we have Seoul National University, which is basically the top university for everything in Korea. <laughs> um, and apparently it, it also stands for art as well. Now, um, although Seoul National University is in top of everything and also in the art field, um, what much to my knowledge is that they also they have very few people in the classroom even for BA. They were, um, I don't know, my knowledge is only like 10 years ago when I was still studying in Korea. So please forgive me if I'm wrong in certain things. You know, time has passed so much since I left Korea. But back then, uh, there were only like, let's say like 10 students for BA program for graphic design. Oh yes, we can share the page on the screen. Hold on. Yes, so I'm now talking about this university over here on top, which is Seoul National University. And like I said, um, the good things about this university, very good name value, very academic, because I know most of the people who graduate here um, are also looking into studying, uh, no, sorry, teaching art in different universities as well. Um, however, there are very few people. Of course, it's not very relatable to uh, graduate school because um, anyhow, in graduate school, you probably have less people. But when I went to school in Korea as a BA student, they had very few people for each department, uh, which of course makes it very special in that way. But at the same time, you're going to have very less alumni. Uh, but again, it might not really apply to graduate school. But um, I would pr probably say this is the best school that you can um, ever look for in Korea. Now, the next school is Hongik University. Hongik University is known for, it's not an art school, uh, it's not an art university. However, the university is really, really known for all different kinds of art. Uh, majors. So even for uh, fine arts or like here, let's say we call it SMA or, or even for craft and design, they're famous for any kind of art related materials. So, um, and I know that let's say um, for graphic design department, um, they also try to offer classes in Mandarin Chinese as well, because there are a lot of Chinese students who, who are studying in Hong Kong University as well. So that might, I don't know whether it might be a plus for you or a minus for you, but there is still this option of taking the courses also in Chinese language, sorry, like Mandarin. Um, the, the, the cons, the, the, the best side of this university is that there are so many people studying there just in, even like in a very specific major. Um, I cannot speak for all the other departments, but because I come from graphic design background, I know that in right now in Hong Kong University in BA, the graphic design department has 200 people in one year, um, which is quite a ver very big amount of number to study in just one year in a very specific media. Again, I cannot speak for all the other departments. I don't know how many people there are, but as far as I know, for graphic design, they have 200 people a year, which is let's say, which is like almost like a thousand people just studying graphic design. Still is the, the top university for any kind of art. So again, if you're interested in, in studying in Korea, I probably do recommend going to Hongik University. Yeah, can I add something to, yes, about uh, Hongik University for fine art, visual art? Um, like now I am also working as an artist in Korea. I've seen a lot of um, curators and artists, more established artists, they, are, they were graduated from Hong Kong University, so they form a strong network. And, it's, and then there's this kind of relationship if you are like graduate from the same university, you can somehow get a chance or connect at least. So this is the uh, pros for, for, for this university. Yes, that is very correct. Um, on the third of the line, we have Kungmin University, which is a university that I actually graduated from. And Kungmin University is known for having the, well, it's, it's one of the best design schools, best uh, for design and craft as well. 
So they they do offer um, fine arts um, courses, visual art courses for painting, for sculpture, but somehow the departments are very separate and um, the, the, the School of Design in Cycling University is known to be the top of the, the of, of Korea. Now, um, however, people do not really know this internationally, which is kind of um, the downside of studying in Korean University. Uh, but even in, within Korea, if you tell about that you study design in Korean University, it's quite, uh, again, not a lot of people, like normal people know about it, but within the industry that uh, everybody tells that it's a very good university. Um, that they do offer glass jewelry, um, like motion graph, like motion design, which is called entertainment design, um, interior design, um, car design, uh, fashion design, graphic design, and so on. They are also very known for um, uh, for mobility design, which is called here, uh, which is the car, like designing cars and anything that's mobile. So it's not only cars, but it can be also like boats, um, anything that's like used for transportation. So anybody, if you're interested in this kind of design field, I highly recommend going to Korean University. On uh, the fourth of list is Chungang University. It's where actually Silas Wong is teaching at the moment. They do offer both um, design and arts fields um, in, in the, the wide spectrum of uh, visual arts courses. Uh, however, their strength is in new media, photography, also film. If anybody's interested in knowing more about photography or for film or different kinds of new media, I highly recommend going to Chungang University. Now, um, all the, the, the best photographers that you probably encounter in Korea are from Chungang University. So again, if you have an interest in pursuing the career path of, of such, I recommend going to this university. Anything that you'd like to add from this, Silas, since you know probably much better. Oh, um, there's one, one thing about uh, the Jungang University uh, for the department I'm teaching, uh, for coffee. So uh, it is actually located not in Seoul. Uh, it's one hour from Seoul. They have shuttle bus from uh, coming from the Seoul campus. But uh, for graduate students, normally you have class in Seoul, but the department based in another city called Anso. And then, um, yeah, it's a good thing to know that uh, looking at all these universities, um, they have different campus. And some, sometimes uh, the program are not in Seoul. So if you are specifically looking for uh, studying in Seoul, you have to pay attention to that. And, yeah, I guess for about the department I'm teaching, maybe I will talk a little bit more later. Yeah. All right. Uh, of course, I'm not going to go through every single thing on this list, which uh, we have compiled here for you. But let me just mention a few more before I jump on to the next issue. Um, so in Korea, we have something called the Women's University, which was specifically designed to teach, um, well, to provide education to women. Um, because, you know, of course, back in the old days, um, things were not fair, you know, they, they were like, women didn't have so much equal rights, and to kind of correct that, we started to establish something called the Women's University. Um, Iwan University, Iwan Women's University is probably the most famous women's university. It's also one of the very top class of universities you can find um, in Korea, although it's a women's university. Uh, which also means that only women can, of course, apply to, to study here. Um, but they do also have very good art program. So here I have a list. Um, the last one of this list is actually KAIS. KAIS is actually a technology and science university. But they do also offer very good um, industrial design department, uh, industrial design uh, major, which is, let's say, more focused on, on the technological side. So let's say like AI, UI, UX, um, anything that requires a certain level of technology and plus the design part, 
no, you are you, you can study here in Kais. Now Kais is also not based in Seoul. Uh, it's, it's based in a in a city that's like two hours away from Seoul, which shouldn't be so far away. But um, again, if you have any interest in this kind of field, um, you're welcome to study in Kais. Now um, here I have a separate list on the very bottom side of wait. Here, uh, which actually requires that you submit the um, a test called Topic. Topic is a Korean profi pro proficiency test that kind of tests based on what kind of Korean level you have. Now I will we will talk more about this a little bit later, but these are also other universities that kind of requires um, certain level of Korean um, if you do want to get admitted. Um, I, I'm not going to speak for everything in here, but I, I will talk about this one here, which is Typography Institute in Paju. Now, they are a graphic design school that offer you both kind of BA and MA courses at the same time. However, the downside of the school is that um, they do not offer a real certificate to the, to the, the public. Uh, what they do is that they are doing an alternative teaching to only teach graphic design and of course typography because of the name that it suggests. Um, so if, let's say if you really want to study, have an alternative view on graphic design, this is a school you, are, you can apply to. Now, I do not exactly know whether, you know, uh, they do accept applicants who only speak English. It's something you can also figure out, you know, if you really want to explore the unknown side of, of this area. But I do know that they have very, very good teachers, even from all over the world. You know, teachers from Japan, from from Netherlands, from the U.S. Uh, those uh, who are very, very well known for graphic design. So here, I will say you can try to explore if you if you're interested in graphic design. Okay, so like I said, I'm not gonna go over the entire list, but here you are free to check out their websites or. You know, what are the requirements or how are the tuition fee because we have all listed down here. All right. Um, yeah. So, oh. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, Hison talked about uh, all these uh, schools and then I think we should also talk about a very important requirement to go to these schools. Um, as I know, all bachelor studies, uh, they require you to have a language, Korean language uh, level of at least a topic two is the test name and grade three. But for graduate school, somehow they, they will list on the website that they offer English course, but that it has to be, uh, you have to look into details. For example, how many foreign professors in, in this faculty? Um, I can talk about uh, the experience of uh, the department I'm teaching. Uh, we have um, six uh, full-time professors and three of us are foreign foreigners. And then, um, so three other Korean professors, um, one, one of them also offer English uh, course. But uh, sometimes when the course is listed as English course, but because there is uh, maybe just one foreigner, or uh, they actually don't uh, meant to give the course in English. It, it, some, sometimes it happens like this. So it is highly recommended you have uh, enough Korean language ability before uh, deciding to study. And even uh, if you have, if you haven't have any experience. Uh, speaking in Korean and there is some examples of language school at the universities they are more well structured but also the fee may be a little bit more expensive than other schools from uh, 1 million to 1 million 801 which is around uh, 10,000 Hong Kong to uh, 12,000 Hong Kong for 10 weeks and then uh, for if you start from zero um, you want to go to study, uh, it is recommended at least you study Korean uh, five days a week and four hours per day for like, it depends on your progress, uh, six months to one year. So it is 
we, we Hison and I yesterday we talked about that we should be realistic on uh, these matters because uh, um, uh, if you don't know about it, you can get very frustrated, and it is in very important uh, not just about uh, understanding the topic you're studying, and, but also making a social life. Uh, as I know some students of mine who are foreigner uh, and they don't really have enough language, uh, Korean language ability and they feel um, isolated sometimes. But for some students who really speak like, fluent Korean, they are very popular. So it really depends on uh, how well we can communicate. So uh, keep in mind on that. Um, Maybe should we also go through uh, all this practical information uh, before we go to another section? Yeah. Um, I have also heard that maybe uh, some students want to know about you. when you are studying, can you work? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, if you are on a student visa, you can apply for part-time job permit. Well, you can work up to um, 30 hours per week. And then after you graduate, you can also apply for a job seeker uh, visa. So there's a link uh, highlighted, you can check. So, and uh, Hison, do you know if there is any uh, program in, uh, listed in, in these uh, universities? Uh, have some something like a studentship, like uh, what the uh, AVA provided. Like a scholarship? Uh, yeah, it's like uh, you help for um, working as a teaching assistant, and then your tuition fees waived, and then some more allowance, like, uh, yeah. Yes, I actually did look into the kind of you know, waiving of some of the, the tuition fee and all that. Um, I do not exactly know whether they do offer this kind of uh, teaching assistant um, jobs or other things. But however, I did see in a lot of universities that they do offer scholarships, which are based on your level of Korean prof proficiency. Um, so let's say if you studied Korean language and then let's say if your level was high enough, they will kind of give you uh, um, uh, a kind of a, a scholarship that kind of waives your a uh, lot of the tuition fee. So in that way, I would say still, you know, if you do want to study in Korea and uh, that I highly recommend that you, you do study Korean language before you even apply. Well, oh, the thing is probably you probably have to go to a language school first. Uh, well, so here in the list, only a few of them are listed, but actually of all the other universities, they do offer this English, uh, sorry, Korean language courses. So if you find an university that you like to go, I highly recommend you go study the Korean language first and then try to apply to the same school with the um, art department. Yeah. But yes. I... Yeah. Uh, below you can also see governmental scholarship uh, from last two years. I am not sure about before, but uh, if you look into the website of uh, Korean Embassy in Hong Kong, uh, you can find that uh, there is a full uh, scholarship that fully cover your all your expenses when you go to study in uh, bachelor or graduate school in uh, in selected university in Korea, um, and the quota for that uh, for Hong Kong uh, for people living in Hong Kong is uh, two persons. Uh, it's including the um, Korean language course. You don't have to pay for that. And a monthly allowance or air ticket insurance, all this. So check the link uh, that I provided so you can. Uh, but it's of course very competitive. It's not just for art and design, it's for all the uh, field of studies. But still you can try. All right, um, so do you also want to explain a little bit about how is life as an artist in Korea? Like what are some of your opportunities to 
um, to, to apply for, let's say when you graduate from a, a university in Korea? Yeah. Um, uh, maybe I can talk a little bit more about my personal experience. That is, and I, I know more in details. Uh, from 2016, around October, I went to the first Korean artist residency. And, uh, if you don't know what is an artist residency, it's basically uh, you apply through a, an open call and then you get the chance to, uh, normally for foreign artists, is uh, up to three months, uh, maybe because of the visa. So you don't have to apply for a visa. And then they provide you a studio and sometimes a living room also, or it's all together in one room. And then you get a chance to exhibit. And some residency, they will give you an allowance for your living or for your air ticket or for your uh, exhibition or publishing a catalog. Or they are different. So it has to be, uh, yeah, like each specific uh, residency. Uh, maybe I will share a few photos here yeah, uh, about the residency. Yeah, thank you. So, just a second. So this is the studio studio in uh, Busan. Or Hong Ki Art Center. It is uh, supported by the Busan Cultural Foundation, which is actually a, a governmental uh, organization. So it, it is like 40 square feet. Uh, sorry, 400 square feet. So a lot of space, you just use it for yourself. And then uh, so I don't have, I didn't provide a lot of photos here, just uh, have an impression. You can check the website. Later I will put it on chat room. And then here you got a room. Like you have, uh, because Korea is really cold in the winter, it's different from Hong Kong, and also quite hot in summer day. It's all equipped with a corner or things like that. And then they got a huge uh, exhibition space. It is about uh, 2,000 square feet. So this is the first time I, I do an exhibition in this scale, but uh, I just have three months and I have to do this exhibition in one and a half months. So <laughs> you really have, if you go for residency, maybe it's a good idea that you plan all things. Uh, uh, even though you want to do some work related to the space, maybe you should plan in advance. So a very high ceiling exhibition space. It was in 2016, yeah. So then um, after, as I mentioned before, 2017, from September, I start to teach in Junior University in Korea. But still, I continue to look for chances in residences. Uh, and this is called uh, Seoul Art Space, Gumcheon. It's also the same nature, but it's based in uh, Seoul. The rooms are smaller, but they have very good network. Um, they will, uh, and, and Busan, the residency also, they will link you up with curators or art critics to talk about your work, and maybe they write for you a text. Or if they find your work suitable for some other exhibition, they will recommend you, and uh, for, for this residency, they recommend me for uh, an international art festival. And then I am still keeping in contact with this curator and uh, going to exhibit in the coming month. So this is a smaller studio, up about 25, uh, 250 square feet. So they have a simple room and you don't have to pay uh, some for some residents, you have to pay for like basic things, deposit or electricity, and then they also have a huge space for me, like three thousand square feet. So really, you, you have to uh, think of how to fill fill up the space. And then I, I here I make 
some work related to teaching and education, and also uh, how to be an artist. Yeah. So, and then they also have a lot of uh, equipment you can borrow. And also they link you up with a curator. Uh, and she is a curator for the Zhejiu Biennale. But it's, I, I don't know, it's postponed because of the corona. Uh, but we still keep in good contact. And she offered to uh, talk with me, uh, to give a talk on my exhibition opening. And now I am in the third uh, artist residency in Korea, uh, which is called Chongju Art Studio. Um, of course, uh, you might know more about Seoul or Busan because they are the two biggest cities in Korea. But uh, actually, a lot of other cities, they have a cultural foundation and they want to develop uh, uh, art and they offer studio. And like Chongju, uh, they have just uh, start open the uh, National Museum of uh, Contemporary and Modern Art and then a lot of happenings and and now I am here in this space. Uh, it's about 50, 500 square feet, the room. There is no uh, separate sleeping room, so but they have uh, divided a smaller room here, so you can take a rest, you can talk, it's toilet inside. Yeah, so and then they also have a big space for exhibition. Divided into two, several space, but uh, also like 3,000 square feet. So if you really are, are interested, not just in studying, but uh, by the way, um, all, most of these artists residency, if uh, you are a graduate student, you can apply still. But if you are still a bachelor student, they don't uh, accept your uh, application. So it's a good way if you are studying, if you are if you want to be active in making art, you can try with your portfolio. Yeah, this is not my work, but yeah, I have a good idea of this. Yes. And the good thing about most of these residencies is that they don't require you to speak Korean at all. So you can apply as a foreign um, artist who's not native to Korea. You can submit all the applications in English and then they'll still accept you um, to, to welcome you in Korea, to give you the studio and then to, to really make you focus on the works that you want to do. And I'm sure there's a lot more artist residencies um, besides the, the, the ones from the list. So you can also do your own research and check it out a little bit. Yeah, here I give a list uh, of this residency. The first one is a National uh, uh, Museum of uh, Contemporary and Modern Art in Seoul. Uh, it is uh, one of the best and they have a lot of uh, support. Also, Sema Nanji is by the uh, City uh, Museum of Art uh, in Seoul. So it's a very good one also. Uh, and then so our space Kunchuan is the second one I have uh, shown in the pictures. And Asia's Culture Center, which is also national, but is based in Guangzhou, is more, this residency, I would say, is more for Indian artists. Incheon Art Platform, Hongqi Art Center in Busan, Chongyu Art Studio, and there are a lot more. And these are more for international artists. All right. Um, so, because you know, I was native to the Korea country, but you are living uh, currently in Korea as a Hong Kong Hong Kong person, right? So, how is the experience like? You know, to be living and working in Korea as a foreigner. Um, uh, I think generally it is a very very good experience in teaching in, in Korea. Um, I teach mainly in English, 
Uh, so most of the students are in, in my department, they uh, used to attend classes in English because we have several uh, foreign professors. But still, uh, some students are uh, not so comfortable to, to talk or to communicate in English, but uh, they still want to learn from uh, in, the class, in my class. Uh, this makes me feel like how important it is uh, knowing how to speak Korean. So this is one of the, also one of the struggle, daily struggle, uh, that um, I don't live in Seoul. I live in nearby the campus of the department, which is in Anseo. Um, so uh, every day I, I feel like how, how much more I should learn the language. So uh, that's why in, at the beginning of this talk, we uh, emphasize again and again, uh, you have to learn uh, uh, Korean. And I think uh, I can compare this to my experience studying in Germany. Uh, you feel much more easy to adapt to, the, uh, to living in Korea. Uh, it's very convenient. Uh, most of the things that uh, you can find, like online shopping, I always say, it's very easy, but um, not all the things are in English. And then about teaching in my department, I'm actually very happy that uh, my seniors, my, uh, uh, yeah, they give me a lot of freedom so I can uh, do whatever I want. Here I got an example of uh, a course I teach. So just a few pictures. So as you have seen in maybe in the Facebook or email or visit class, I, mean, uh, uh, I teach different courses like basic photography, and digital media projects. And, and the name actually doesn't matter that much because they don't really control or keep guidance. I have uh, total freedom to create the, the content of the course. And then uh, I made a project with my uh, class, which is actually suggested by one of the students. Uh, there is, have you heard of uh, butter, butter game? Like you get something uh, you start with something small, which can be a potato, and then you exchange with something. And at the end of the day, you uh, uh, see how, what can you get. Like uh, I separate them into different uh, teams. So they start with one potato, and they and we all go to a place called Itaewon. Uh, Itaewon is you can. How do you compare to Hong Kong? It, there is some, some characteristic of Lang Kwai Fong, but not exactly. It's also a multicultural place. So uh, uh, a lot of very chill people. And then um, this is one of the team. Um, so they start with a potato and then uh, they got some, some of these, what is it, these like puffing. And then uh, there is also some gallery here. So I follow them to a gallery called Whistle Gallery. Please don't you know about this gallery. Whistle Salt. <laughs> so, um, and then I know this uh, gallery both. And then I just ask, uh, I have some students here and they want to exchange something with me. So they uh, got something bigger. And then also they approach this agency. Uh, like uncles uh, for bigger like balls, but it looks like a protest, but it's not. So uh, we spend eight hours in Taiwan. So <laughs> at the end, you can see all people are quite tired, but also they they enjoy. And yeah, also some guys here just uh, pop into our group. <laughs> 
and then we and then we develop these uh, items collected into a flea market in our campus. This is the campus at the background, and we sell those stuff. And I ask them to uh, make a intro video like a promo promotion. And this guy just sell, didn't get anything. And then he said, "Oh, I turned the potato into chips." So <laughs> he's selling some chips. Yeah. So this is just an idea about, uh, and as a graduate student, you can also uh, participate in uh, bachelor uh, classes. Actually, um, it is also recommended because uh, the graduate school doesn't have that much of a variant, uh, variety of courses. And if you are coming from a slightly different uh, field of studies, um, it's good also to make some friends. This is uh, yeah, the impression of. So, so far I really enjoyed teaching here and then, uh, yeah. What about the living expenses compared to Hong Kong? Yeah, living expenses is one of the really good thing uh, living in Korea compared to Hong Kong. Uh, I guess if you have a like ordinary salary in Hong Kong or, or in Korea, in Korea, uh, then you just spend like maybe 25% of your salary for your rent. Then you, you got a lot of, you don't have to work for many different jobs. I'm, I'm talking about not a high salary, but like an ordinary person. And also there is a lot of choices of area you can uh, rent. And then oh, maybe there, I can also mention that there is a different renting system here in Korea. This one extra thing called Chanse. How, how can I translate that? Um, it is, uh, there's no English name for that, but uh, you give maybe 80% of, of uh, equal to the house uh, or the apartment cost as a deposit, and then you don't have to pay monthly rent. So if you got some savings, uh, and, and the cost of uh, apartment in Korea is in, cannot be comparable to Hong Kong, I would say. So uh, if you are not living in the most essential area in Seoul, then you can you don't have to pay like monthly rent, so you can spend your money on a lot of different things and having a I, I think having a good quality of life. In Korea. All right, um, I think we did cover most of the things that we wanted to talk here today, um, and now because we have fifteen minutes left for the talk, I would still like. Um, to ask the audience whether you have any questions, whether it's personal or not, that you'd like to ask us about living or studying and working in Korea. Hi, Hison and Thaddeus. I have a question. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm wondering about uh, the, tax, the tax rate in Korea. So is that is similar to Hong Kong that not much tax required. So, um, right. Hmm. Probably Silas will know better now that he's working in Korea. Oh, but you know, <laughs> I didn't really work in Hong Kong for a full time job. So, but I can say it's like uh, maybe 17% of 10, I forgot exactly, like 15 to 17% of your whole salary. But, uh, also, you have to pay for your pension, uh, and also you have to pay for insurance, and also when you buy some products, all of them have a, a tax. Uh, in Hong, yeah, VAT. In Hong Kong, a lot of products are free of uh, like duty free. Yeah. Uh, but the good part is that. Uh, the different thing in Korea is that whenever you get any kind of salary, let's say if it's for part-time job or for full-time job, 
they always give the the money after the tax is paid. So, so the good thing is that you don't have to do your own math of how much I am paying for the tax, how much I should save for it, because they already give you the money after taking out the tax part. Um, so yeah, probably if you ask for the price that you get, uh, you know, after the tax, then that's probably how you should be making uh, in general. So yeah, I don't yeah. know the also percentage exactly, but that's how it goes. Yeah, okay. I saw a question from Yves. Uh, she asked, is it possible to develop a career path in Korea through residency? And also, uh, if she wants to work in Korea as a fine artist, uh, will it be considered a proper job for working physical? So uh, I can answer first on uh, residency. Uh, develop a career career in Korea. Yeah, it is possible. I would say um, at the beginning, at least you can, as I said, uh, the residency, the better one will even connect you with a lot of local professionals, the curators, and also you get to know some art, other artists and you got the chance to exhibit. And also like uh, they, oh, like, actually I have a book here. They will even publish a lot of books. So it is really good for like developing your, your career. But I would say just for the beginning. Uh, and the key point is also first learn careers. <laughs> and then um, second is uh, it will be the same as Hong Kong, you need to look for uh, more important chance uh, place to exhibit. I, I would say in Korea, there are a lot more artists than in Hong Kong. Uh, I, I can't tell how many, but maybe like 20, 50 times more. And, it, and then uh, the good thing is uh, every region has uh, uh, some support for artists. The bad thing is mostly it is for local artists to apply. So if you get to know some local artists, if uh, you work in, as a group, then these local artists can apply for the grant and then you can do this issue together. But also, if you are, uh, if you got a Hong Kong permanent ID, and then you, like now in this residency, I can apply a grant from HKADC. <laughs> I can cover all the production and uh, this, this kind of course. And then you can still uh, work as a Hong Kong artist based in Korea, and then you uh, get chance to exhibit in different places, and then you uh, get grants from Hong Kong. So both ways. So yeah, it is. I think it's the chance uh, is not bad as an artist in Korea. Uh, for as a proper job for working visa. Uh, okay. Do you have any idea about that? See, no, I don't know so much about the visas in Korea. <laughs> so I never yeah. have to apply for one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your friends. Uh, so if I, I heard that you have some foreign friends, they're based in, in Korea, but they are not like working as an artist or how about designer? Mm. I know a friend who always travels to Korea for residencies. Um, let's say like once or twice a year, because I know you can stay in Korea f like for free for three months without a visa. So this person always just goes okay. back and forth. And then of course, it's better to have a re real motivation. So every time there's an exhibition, he participates, he will travel for three months. Every time there's a residency applies for you, travel for three months. Um, yeah. Honestly, I do not know whether there's a working visa just for artists. Uh, maybe there's a working visa for freelancers. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, uh, by the way, uh, we have mentioned some methods about visas, but uh, that uh, the visa methods can change quite, quite suddenly. In, uh, so you always have to look for that before you apply for it or before you decide to do something. Yeah. And 
yeah, like what Hison said, um, even I guess there is not no working visa for artists, uh, but it's not so. Uh, now maybe it's a bit difficult to travel, but I hope hopefully later uh, it's also a way to work between from Hong Kong and Korea. And then if you got some chance to get get into a job or you find a way how to get to stay longer, then it's uh, maybe it's good to take time to do that. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Oh, Lisa, I got a question. I guess I asked you yesterday <laughs> because I'm also interested. Um, for getting like freelance or mini jobs, uh, or maybe as a designer uh, in Korea. So, uh, how should uh, one do that? Sure. Um, there are a lot of different platforms, like online websites, where you can search for this kind of mini jobs, and there's so many. Um, I didn't post it here because I realized every website is actually in Korean. So probably wow. it's not probably really helpful at the moment for anybody in this room. Uh, of course, you can try to use Google Translate, but yeah. Um, so every, well, I mean, most of the things are based online. So it's not so hard to look for jobs or for any kind of specific material that you're looking for. Uh, also, there's, I know one website they, where they give you anything that's related to like art or design jobs as well. Um, so. Again, it's not too hard to look for this kind of job and every job is available for anyone uh, in Korea. Of course, probably the language barrier might be the, the one thing, but I've seen a lot of uh, foreign students in Korea, like working in, even like in restaurants or even like in shops uh, with like, they speak a little bit of Korean, of course, but you know, you can probably, you can still get a job um, as such. Um, yeah, but also I'm sure a lot of museums are also hiring, um, especially for different kind of languages. Um, let's say, I don't know, maybe they need to have a, a translator for Chinese text or for English ones. Um, and, and most of the museums, the, most of the steps in museums, they do speak English. So it's probably not really so hard to communicate with them, even though you don't know Korean. So yeah, there's that. Yeah, I, I would say there is a strength of people from uh, Hong Kong that uh, in in Korea there uh, is a high demand of English and Chinese speakers, translators to work in different fields, also in art or translation. So uh, I think it is possible to, to get a lot of chances to, to uh, earn some basic um, income by that way. So any more questions? Yeah. Um, I have, uh, we'll still have a few minutes. So I will have one question for you, or, or maybe that both uh, Heisen's. So, um, so I see you are teaching in Korea and Heisen's yeah. teaching in Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you tell me about your teaching um, you know, um, experiments with the students, such as like Heisen to teach the local students and what any, you know, any specific area you want to mention <laughs> related to your experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah maybe Heisen. Sure. Um, I mean, for me, what I like about, especially about AVA is it's very international in terms of the, the teaching staff. Um, so even though I don't speak Cantonese, I don't speak Mandarin, um, I feel still very welcome by everybody because also all the students speak English. So I don't have hard time communicating with any of the people in AVA, especially. Um, but also the diversity is what makes um, AVA quite um, interesting. We have so many people from different countries and they have different kind of opinions and the idea the, the way we share these ideas is I think um, the most valuable thing about 
my experience of teaching here in Hong Kong. Probably it's not the same, let's say if I go to another department in another university, but as far as from my experience, that's what I really, really like about it. Um, some people, however, do say that, let's say Hong Kong students le like is less likely to participate about discussions in class, uh, which I par partially agree. You know, if I try to ask some questions to the audience, always there's a silence coming back, <laughs> uh, which is probably something that we need to work on as, as you know, as an educator to how to make, you know, this people like students to participate more in, in this kind of discussions. But I don't know, maybe, how is it in Korea? Like, say, how, is, how are the discussions? I'm sure maybe because you also have a different experience because you teach things in English and maybe people are less likely to talk to you. I don't know. How about you, Silence? Yeah, I would always say uh, students in Hong Kong are not so passive. Uh, of course, it's also about the language barrier. Uh, but I would, uh, after a while, uh, I get to know about the students, they are not really passive, but they, uh, in the students in Korea, they take more time to listen to you and to, to think about what to do. And if they get questions, they normally come to you personally. And if you talk with them, they are quite open to uh, uh, express themselves and talk about their ideas for the work. But uh, it's also very important to build trust between like the teachers and the students. And uh, about the question Momo asked, I think uh, I am really happy that uh, teaching in a foreign place and then I can connect back to where I studies and making exchange. I, I re like before I had um, organized an exhibition uh, once in ABA, bringing some Korean students to, to uh, ABA and then bringing some ABA students to Korea. This kind of exchange, uh, not just like remember, make me remember how the time when I studied, but also um, how I understand a different culture and also understand more about uh, where I'm from and the culture of Hong Kong when I get a comparison. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, the thing I, I want to mention. Um, we agree that uh, we have a very international terms. So it is uh, really no difficult to find the teacher. Um, they have the dialogue with the overseas alumni to um, really talk about the culture and the study issues in um, various countries. Um, yeah, I'm glad about that. And I'm happy uh, Hazen um, joined us because I remember the first time she has the, you know, the, the equipment interval. We think about uh, she's so young and then she said that she wanted to join and then we invite her to half year or three months to like a artist residency in our school and to see how she really liked Hong Kong. And after that, uh, we think about she absolutely the suitable people to teach with us and join the term. And uh, we, actually, we always think about going to Korea <laughs> and have a guy to buy Hazen, but I think uh, maybe who, um, she didn't have time. We, we actually uh, we talk about this uh, with the teacher. And also, Zainas is very, um, thank you for you have been organized one um, exhibitions, um, exchange exhibitions, and brings up some student works to um, AVA and uh, starting that kind of international operations. And I also noticed some um, international, especially um, in Korea, they provide that kind of exchange program to see uh, in the future, we can, um, you know, ask uh, Hison to cooperate together with that kind of event. And yeah, we absolutely want our students to have an open, you know, a global mind and also um, an international well, of visions in the future. Um, if no questions, time's up. Um, thank you very much um, to bringing us quite useful data for our students. So um, we'll check you then uh, later.
Um, I will uh, remind uh, you guys that the next round on the 25th of August, I will invite one alumni, um, Rora Lee. She's graduated from Thailand University of Art. And uh, we have our teachers from Taiwan, late of Taiwan, Sunny Wang, to talk about how, um, you know, the, how to go to Taiwan and all the related further study in Taiwan as well. So don't miss it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.